Reef Teats is sponsored by Brightwell Aquatics and Bulk Reef Supply. Today I'm going to show you guys how to build a floating light bar. What's going on guys? Devin from Reef Dudes. Now one of the most common questions I get asked in my videos is where did I buy this light bar? Where did I get it? Um, it pops up all the time. Um, so today I'm actually going to start building one for my future frag tank. So I figured I'd show you, take you guys along the journey and show you guys how I built it. Now this is not a pre-done kit. This is something that is DIY with extruded aluminum. Now in my previous tank, the light bar was actually bolted to the stand. Now on the water box, I didn't really want to do it to the wood stand. So on this one, I actually bolted it to the wall. So I still got to tidy up the wires and a few things, but if you look in the back, we have some L brackets here and on one side is bolted to the stud and the other side I just using drywall plugs to hold it, but it is against the wall and super solid. Now the whole thing is built out of what's called 1515. Um, it's kind of like 8020 and it is aluminum profile. So the 1515 is inch and a half. And I decided to go a little heavier gauge just to make sure I had lots of support, kind of pushing out that five or so feet. Now there's a ton of places that sell the 8020 aluminum profile. So depending on where you're located, there's probably somewhere in your area that sells it. And I'll kind of show you guys the parts that I got to build the new rail for the frag tank. Now we finally got through the packaging, we're down to our actual parts. Um, the main two pieces are gonna be for our extruded aluminum rails. Now, at least in my case, the shorter one, we got a shorter piece, a longer piece. One of them is going to be for kind of the height of the rail, like the ground to the rail height. And the other piece is just going to be for the extra length of how much it's going to be hanging out over top of the tank. Uh, we also got these little channel covers. They'll slide in and just kind of clip on top and give it a nice smooth kind of flush look. And it's also a great way to hide all the wires. So we're going to add these in and hide all our cables afterwards. Now on my last one, I actually went pretty hardcore. I had a center guise and corner place and everything. And on this one, I actually decided to go a lot simpler. So I had the metal machine for kind of a counter bore. And this is gonna allow this little bracket to sit inside. Now on the top rail, I had the two holes bored into it for this kind of a cleat system. And this is gonna slide in and give the top rail a nice solid point to slide into and it's going to keep it very minimalistic and give us tons and tons of strength. So once we got our little kind of cleat system started, it just slides into the end of the rail and we start tightening things down. And this is going to be an insanely strong bond and it's very, very minimal. Now the only tricky part is just tightening this little Allen key through this little hole. Now that we've got that installed, you can kind of see just how strong that cleat actually is. Um, just those two little screws in that rail is holding up this whole thing and that's six and a half feet long. So it's amazing how much kind of structural support this stuff actually has. Now I went with 15, 15 because that inch and a half is going to give us a little more strength and kind of resist a bit of the deflection from the weight of all the radions on it. Once I get the new Gen 5s for this tank, I'm going to take the Gen 4s and put this one in the office. So I got two Gen 5s and two Gen 4s. So once that's done, we're going to move that over. Now the next question you guys are going to ask is how do you attach your lights to the rail? If you guys notice this is just the RMS slide knot except I've taken off the top part that couples the regular Ecotech mount and I just kept the bottom X. And now what we're going to do to attach the bottom X to the rail is use T-nuts. And these little guys actually slide inside of the rail. So they'll slide inside and it gives you a little nut to tighten it down. Um, so with our little X RMS mounting, we're going to have that underneath with a washer, then put the bolt into the T-nut through it. Then we can slide along the rail and just tighten it up when it's in the right spot. So super duper easy way to mount it and it looks absolutely very, very sleek and slick. And then once everything's mounted complete, we can slide on our little channel cover, clip this in, it just buttons it up and gives it a very nice finish. Um, in my case, I usually run all the wires first and then I can put that over the top and it hides all the wires inside of the bar and makes it very, very sleek. And then from there, um, the next step is going to be to bolt it to your stand or to the wall depending on your setup. For that, you can just use those little L brackets and same thing, you use the T-nuts inside the L bracket and then the other side will just be that flat side and you pop a couple screws either into your stand. Um, if you're doing a wood stand, I'd be a little more cautious. I'd want to make sure you have a way to like sandwich it to it and make sure that contortion isn't really going to affect it. Um, in my case, I screwed it into the 2x4 on the wall and on my new frag tank, I got a steel, empty steel tube right in the center of the stand. So I'm going to drop the bar right into it 
and I'm just going to use a single T-nut inside of the stand just to bolt it through the steel, and that's just going to lock it in place. So really cool way. Once the stand shows up, I will take you through the rest of that process, but it's really easy to build a very cool light bar out of 8020. And if you guys have never used this stuff, it's pretty much like Big Kids Lego. You can build just about anything out of it. But just to button up and clean up the ends, I've got these little end caps just for where the cuts are with this, the exposed aluminum. So you just poke these in. And it just tidies up that end, gives you a nice black, flush, soft edge. So if you've never used it, the 8020 is actually really, really cool stuff. And in my case, I went with 1515, just because of that extra thickness, that inch and a half is going to resist any sag over that distance. Um, if there's any deflection or any little bit of it, it's going to be extremely minimalistic, especially with four or five radions on it. And yeah, it's really, really cool stuff. If, you know, whatever manufacturer's arms aren't working for you, for whatever reason, your tank's a bit different, or in my case, I just did not want to mount on the side. I wanted it floating. Then you can get very creative and build your own light arms with this stuff. Um, it's not the cheapest, but it's really not terrible when you price out what this would have cost compared to buying a couple arms. I think I was about 180 bucks in parts for it which would be a couple arms right there, right? So kind of pays for itself off pretty quickly, especially when you need these creative mounting situations. So yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, as always, hit that like button. If you do, make sure you subscribe. And if you want to check out kind of my original video on it, you can check out that one right over here.